All right, so we're live. We got folks with us and live here. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Alex Camilio, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. And today I have my good friend Craig Grant, just like every Monday, um, for our free workshop yeah. series. So we're going to talk more about that in a second. Um, but Craig, thank you for joining us. Um, of course, course. Yeah, absolutely. I know you're teaching today, right? You're, you're, you're just like cutting out for 20 I, minutes. I literally yeah, I'm, I'm running the Arkansas's GRI for tech and marketing. I literally put them on a quick break so I could do this. So. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you to Arkansas for lending us, uh, Craig, for 10 or 15 minutes here. I uh, appreciate you doing these workshops with us, Craig. And uh, just so everybody knows, I'm going to be doing the majority of the photo editing and those sort of components today. Um, so Craig is going to give us a quick tip on some screenshotting early on, uh, and then we are going to dive into the full photo editing component to it. Um, so before we get started here, uh, again, anybody wants to say hello in chat, we'd love to, uh, to hear from you. And one other thing is if you have any photos that you want us to uh, mess with today or improve or, or show as examples today, um, feel free to throw those into comments and we will definitely um, definitely try to pick a few and see if we can use the, those as we go. Um, all right, so that being said, uh, I just want to take it over for a second here and um, just mention that this is all uh, brought to you by um, the Real Estate Technology Institute and Service for Life. Um, so uh, Real Estate Technology Institute is Craig's organization. Uh, if you are interested in any sort of technology training, there is a huge host of videos on there. Um, I am also one of the uh, the educators over there, so pretty awesome. And uh, definitely check that out. And then as well as Service for Life, which is um, what I'm involved in. Uh, Service for Life is a fantastic tool if you're looking to follow up with uh, your your friends, your family, uh, your past clients, um, all those people that send you business on a consistent basis. Uh, Service for Life is definitely one of the best tools to do that that I have seen from agents that, and that I've seen agents use over the years. So definitely check out those two. Um, as I said, RETI and Service for Life. And uh, from there, I'm just gonna dump right over in and uh, say hello to Craig. Let me uh, let me pop you up here. And there we go. So we're seeing your screen, Craig. Um, Craig's first going to walk us through, uh, maybe just say a quick note about RETI, but then he's going to walk us through a screenshot uh, or screen recording on an Apple device. We're going to do a quick, two quick screenshot tools, um, and then we're going to dive a lot more into the photo editing component just so everybody knows. So Craig, feel free to take it away. Yeah, sure. Uh, so first of all, with RETI, um, as Alex mentioned, we have a whole team of international speakers in our team that are tech and marketing experts in the real estate world. Um, and yep, Alex is definitely one of them. He's been with us from day one. He does an amazing job. Uh, and what RETI basically is, is just a site that has now over 2,500 instructional videos, product reviews, webinars, including new ones we do every Wednesday afternoons. Uh, it's just a great way for a realtor to learn anything they want about tech, marketing, cybersecurity, stuff like that to run your real estate business. So that's what RETI is. And as Alex mentioned, if you're interested, go check it out uh, maybe after the class. So what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you a couple different ways to do screenshots. And he said I'm going to do it on a Mac, but I'm going to teach it on the Windows as well. Um, so screenshotting is a really basic, easy thing to do. It really is. Uh, and you just need to know the tricks how to do it. So for example, there's the keystroke options on a Mac. It is your shift key, your command key, and the number four all at the same time. And if I did that, you should see that now I have a little crosshair that showed up on the screen. And now I could just drag this over any area to do a screenshot of it. Okay. So it's the, again, the shift key, the command key, and the number four. If you're a Windows person, you also have keys that could do it. You have your print screen button, which will do a screenshot of the screen. Or you have your windows and your print screen button, which would then allow you to drag and drop, kind of like what I just did there. So, quick, again, you have quick options quick tip, built in. Yep. Quick tip for Windows users. If you're using uh, multiple monitors, Alt print screen is the monitor that you're currently working you on. Alt print screen for the monitor you're in. That's a good call. Yep. Um, and then 
when it comes to Mac, and by the way, there's paid programs you could use for screenshotting and everything, but I'm always like, you know, if there's something free that does the job, why? So for example, on a Mac, you have a free program built in called Screenshot. And if you click on that, oh, it just went to the wrong window, hold on. Maybe I should have done the alt trick Alex just talked about. Let me just drag it over. But now I have the ability to do a screenshot, kind of similar that I did with the keystroke options, but you also have a little toolbar that says, do you want to do the entire screen? Do you want to do, which we'll go ahead and do that. Um, do you want to do just an area? Do you want to do video recording of the screen? So if I click capture, it now just saved that picture that I did of the whole screen. So these things are pretty quick and easy. Um, and then the third trick we're going to show you is part of why I had the browser up uh, is there's what are called browser extensions, which we cover heavily on RETI, how to get them, how to use them and everything. But these little icons at the top of the toolbar are different little tools I've added into my browser to do things on the internet. And a one that I use a lot that I love is this one here called Nimbus Screen Capture. Craig, I'm, so Craig, I'm only Nimbus. seeing you. Uh, yep. I'm only seeing you share your actual window, your your Chrome window, not uh, all of Chrome. So I'm not seeing a lot of the uh, the top the bar piece. Let me see if we can. I'll just do the whole screen. There you go. There we go. All right, so now I'm sharing that whole screen, so you should see it. Good? Uh, yep. Uh, give me one second here, okay. Craig. There you go. You got it? All right, we're all set. There you go, Craig. Okay. All right, so... My, I was gonna say my favorite is that I was gonna say my favorite is that arrow tool right there, Craig. It's all right. It automatically comes up with the arrow tool on it. Like that's the first thing it's telling you. So if you need to grab a screenshot quick and say, "Oh no, it's right here," or you know, try to guide somebody through um, what you're doing, this makes it really, really simple to just easily throw on an arrow and say, you know, look here, or this info is there, or whatever it is. Um, and do that with a screenshot. So, uh, first of all, is that helpful? Hold on. I think we pop. Shift Command 4. On a PC, it's the print screen, or the Windows and print screen, or the Alt and print screen, whichever one you're doing. Uh, and then you also have, again, on a Mac, you have the one called Screenshot, the, the program. And then the third tool I showed you is Nimbus, which allows you to do it online of any web page you're looking All right. So we, I guess folks lost sound for a second there, Craig. And I know you got to dip out. I'll go through Nimbus uh, again here. I think it was an issue with how we were screen sharing there. Um, but I'll go through Nimbus here in a second with folks uh, of what Craig was just covering to, to sort of go over that again. Yeah. All right. Sorry about That's that. all good. No, it's all good. We're, we're uh, you know, we're still early in this workshop series. I, I appreciate everybody who's here with us um, and joining us today. All of a sudden, Facebook just all of a sudden was like, hey, here's 30 comments about sound. And I'm like, oh, hey, you just ought to load it all of it. <sighs> <sighs> okay, so um, I apologize to anyone who lost sound there for a second. I'll go over Nimbus um, once Craig pops off. But I'm just going to uh, say thank you because I know you got to run back to teach the Arkansas GRI, Craig, right? True. All right. Well, I appreciate the time. 
Uh, thank you so much. Check out RTI. I'm going to go into Nimbus and then I'm going to go into the actual photo editing component um, of what we're going to cover today beyond just some basic screenshot stuff that might be helpful uh, when you're doing either editing or marketing or things like that. So, all right. Um, all right. Sounds thanks, good. buddy. Thanks, yeah, have a good one. Good luck with the rest good. of the class. Thanks. All right. So uh, let me bring this up here and... Cool. All right. So let's just, all right, there we go. So thank you everybody. Um, I will show you this Nimbus component here quick. I use the same thing. Um, this is one of those tools that we we've shared with each other amongst the years, but uh, it's a Chrome extension. It's a browser extension that you can add on top. So uh, this is, you see one of the tools that we're going to use later today, but let's say I want a quick screenshot of this. Uh, I can just open this little Chrome extension up here and it's going to give me all these pieces, visible part of page, selected area, entire page, uh, selected and scroll. If you want to be able to scroll down a page as you're taking a screenshot, um, there are a bunch of helpful tools when it comes to that. You just click on visible part of page, for example. Uh, and as we were saying, there's these arrows. So I can say, oh my God, you want to go to the thing right here? Or, or uh, you know, you, you want to click this button, right? When you're sending stuff back to people. It makes it really, really easy. Um, and everybody can hear me, right? Just making sure that we are good. Everybody can hear uh, the audio and, uh, and, and can see how to do this. Um, so yeah, like I said, very quick, very easy. Uh, add some text, add whatever you need, and uh, and send screenshots back. So, is that a helpful tool? Let me let me ask for for folks in chat first. Is that a helpful tool? I hope it is. Um, let me know here in chat. All right. So that is the screenshot part. Let's dive in now to the photo editing component. And I, I mentioned this before, but if anyone has photos that they want me to um, use as we're going here, uh, feel free to throw them in chat or throw them in comments. Um, we will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just very quickly go and I'll use whatever I can for some of these photos. Uh, and I, I got some folks earlier uh, that sent me some photos as well. So um, we are going to talk today about some different photo editing tools that you can use to, uh, to work in your business to do everything from edit and improve some of your listing photos to uh, things like just take a better picture for social media and, and make a picture that might otherwise be bland um, a little bit better uh, or even you know work on those headshots. You'd be amazed what a little bit of editing and some really, really basic editing and those sorts of tools can do when it comes to um, you know putting out that sort of content. Um, we got a uh, question in chat. Is Nimbus free? Yes. Nimbus is 100% free. And, and I want to tell you guys something today. Um, these workshops that we're doing, Craig and I always do our best job of bringing you whatever is a free tool. Um, nine times out of 10, the things that we are going to recommend are free. And if we we'll recommend something that costs money, it's because it doesn't exist somewhere else for free. And we've not been able to find that. Craig and I, uh, use as many free, free, free tools as we possibly can. Uh, so definitely, definitely are going to do our best to always come to you guys with, um, with those tools. Uh, Barry said he's been using Snagit. Snagit's another great one. Um, I just sort of latched onto Nimbus the way it sort of scrolls in pages and some of the advanced features and whatever. Um, I just tend to really like, uh, and, uh, yeah, and it's free. So definitely check that out. Um, all right. So let me keep moving on here. Photo editing. We're, we're going to be talking today about uh, doing some photo editing and some things that you can do with it. Everything from making your listing photos pop a little bit more and or to your headshots and making those stand out uh, or be able to use them in ways that you otherwise might not be able to. Now, when I say uh, listing photos, you might be saying to yourself, oh, well, you know, I have a photographer or I have somebody um, that does some editing for me and, and does whatever. And, and a lot of them are really good. So some of these photographers, some of these groups out there um, that are doing the work for you do a good enough job that you never have to touch 
any of your listing photos or, or do anything like that. But what you'll often find is that some photographers are good at taking the photos, um, but maybe they're not doing a ton of post editing or really touching them up or spending that extra time touching them up at the end because it takes time. It takes a little bit of time to um, go through, you know, test things, see if you like it, uh, see how it might look, uh, and then go from there. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go here that, um, you know, some of the stuff we're going to be covering is stuff that, you know, you, you'll be able to do yourself and improve on even what some photographers might be sending you. It's kind of funny, uh, for those that saw earlier in the group today, we posted something where we took something that is a an actual photographer, a touched up final photo, um, and, and even improved on that. So we'll, we'll show you an example of that today as well. So let me first dive in and mention that, um, so I use a number of different editing tools. And uh, I, I personally use a lot of the Photoshop tools. And, you know, they're, I've used them forever. Um, they're expensive, and I don't necessarily think I would recommend them for your everyday, um, you know, real estate agent or person that is, you know, having to do some quick graphics here and there and maybe not, um, you know, have to learn all of the intricacies of Photoshop and all those details. So the tools I'm going to try to show today are either free um, or things where, uh, you know, they're very simple, few clicks here and there kind of tools and not stuff where you're going to have to learn all the in-depth of Photoshop and, and the crazy editing um, that goes on in that realm. So I'll mention this. We've talked about Canva and we talked about Canva last week as a, a free design tool. Now Canva inside of it has a a really kind of interesting thing because they do some of this stuff that we're going to talk about for photo editing, editing today. They do a lot of it within the free tool and then they have some pieces of it that are in the paid tool. But then I'm going to show you an entirely free tool that does the other parts that uh, Canva tries to often charge for. Um, so if you combine them, you don't necessarily have to do or use uh, a lot of the paid features. So in Canva, um, if you are starting off with a design here, we'll just go with something simple. Um, we're just going to say, you know what, let's do a let's do a Facebook post as a template. And we'll just click into the first one here just to give you a quick example. Um, and I am going to Get rid of that. I'm going to drop on, let's say, you know what? Let's upload photo here. And we're going to grab the first one. Um, now, this is a friend of mine, uh, Carissa Thompson, sent me this earlier. And, and some folks might see this uh, or have seen this in, in, our, in our group and sort of I was messing around with editing quickly. Um, and we'll use another program to do sort of the same thing as well. But I just want to show you here that inside of Canva itself and inside of this free tool, you'll notice that when you click on the image up top here, you're going to see effects, filter, adjust, prop, flip, right, right across. These are all options that you can use to edit or add effects to what you're doing. Okay. Now, you have to connect some other pieces or possibly upgrade depending on which effects you're using. But the filter option, um, this is free. This is a very easy, basic uh, filter option where you can go through and change um, some basic filters that you would. And you've probably seen a lot of this stuff on your phone before. You can go through and say, how intense do I want that filter to be? And so on. Uh, you can also adjust these. And we'll step back here for a second. Go back. Now, you probably see me quickly flowing through all of that, right? Um, I want to share something with folks today, which is that learning your shortcut keys is going to be one of the most helpful things you can possibly do when it comes to editing or working in any photo editing program. Um, things like Control Z is back. Control Shift Z is forward. So if I want to step forward in what I just did, Control Z back, 
control shift Z forward. Okay. So you'd be amazed how many programs have control Z as an undo feature in it and learning some simple keyboard shortcuts like that is going to save you a ton of time. Now we take this image here and we see that we, we can filter it, but we can also adjust it. And this is going to allow us to do things like adjust the brightness, change up some of the contrast, saturation, all these various um, effects or essentially the funny part to me is pretty much all of these are settings within a camera, a lot of them anyway. The blur maybe not, some of the other stuff maybe not, but your, your contrast, some of your brightness, your saturation, some of those features are things that are actually features that you can set in a camera when you're taking it. The problem is that the light is changing so quickly, um, the, the, you know, things are moving, all that sort of stuff. It's hard to get that perfect, perfect setting when you go in and do something like this. And that's why a lot of times, People will uh, do a lot of post editing to make this photo look a little bit better, change some of the quality uh, and things like that of how great this photo looks. Now, I want to show this to you inside of Canva because I, I want to at least mention um, as an extension of the workshop we did last week is that we, we really, you know, you can do some of these editing stuff, some of these editing features right inside of Canva if you want to, and you don't ever have to leave that tool. However, there are a number of other ways to do this that I think might be a little bit better uh, and a little bit easier for you if you're willing and want to work outside of Canva in another free tool. So um, first, let me pause for a second. Any questions from anybody in chat? Uh, is this helpful so far? Are these things that, um, that you're learning and sort of advancing and what you can learn from photo editing? Uh, let me know in comments. We are also talking today, um, as we said, about photo editing and um, how we can improve some of the quality and some of the, the listing photos, making them pop more, uh, making your headshots appear a little bit better, things like that. So there are some other tools that you can do this very quickly. Now, if you happen to say, be on the road, um, I'm just going to pull up here for a sec my phone. And one second here, I'll send my phone over so you can see it. Awesome. All right. Everybody can see my phone, right? Cool. So everybody can see it, right? Everybody can see the phone. Great. Um, so it looks like. Uh, not wanting to stay connected for me. Sorry, give me one sec here. All right, there we go. Cool. So as I was mentioning before, um, you can do this, these sorts of things on your phone on the fly. Uh, one of my favorite apps to be able to do this is an app called Snapseed. S-N-A-P-S-E-E-D. It's another free app um, available on iOS and Android, and uh, it allows you to very easily add filters, um, improve the feature set or improve the, the image a little bit here. And uh, just to give you an idea of how many features are available in a tool like this, um, I just want to open up the, the feature set and you can see all those same settings for uh, tuning an image, um, here where you can change the brightness and the contrast and the saturation, all of those sorts of things. Absolutely key. Um, so there's a lot. And I don't want to walk you through all of the features of Snapseed today uh, because I find that if you, you know, need to do a quick edit or a quick thing on your phone, that's great. But if you're going to really be doing something on, say, a listing photo or improving your headshot, it's a lot better to work uh, from a computer, from your laptop, you know, using a mouse or using something where you're not trying to do a lot of little settings uh, on your phone. So let me, um, I'm going to close out of the phone here. I'm going to take you back over to the display. And I want to share a tool with you. This is another free, totally free tool called Pixlr. Uh, Pixlr. All right, is everybody with me? Has anyone used Snapseed or things like that before? 
I'm wondering if... All right. So, um, for, for the folks that are, uh, you know, have used any of these programs before, sorry, I'm just, took me a second there. Uh, it did not want to update, um, for some reason it was not updating chat. I apologize about that. So, uh, the next one we're going to cover is Pixlr, another totally free tool. Um, Pixlr has a few different sort of sub tools within it that are very, very easy to use and something where you can easily run through, um, you know, and change some listing photos in just a couple clicks and, and really truly improve on them. So the first one I'm going to show you here is something called Pixlr X. And Pixlr X is very similar to what we saw in Snapseed, what you can do in Photoshop, and even some of the things that you can do in Canva, but it's a lot, uh, a lot richer. It has more features and I think is a better program from, uh, than Canva when it really comes to photo editing. So, uh, let's start out by opening an image and I'm going to go with that. Um, I mentioned this earlier and I'm going to go with the same image from earlier. And this is a friend of mine, uh, Carissa Thompson. She is in, uh, Finger Lakes region of New York. Um, really great realtor up there. She was a, a fellow panelist on the NAR panel. Um, so really appreciate that. And, uh, it was, it was really awesome. And she sent me this photo and I said, this has already been touched up, hasn't it? And I said, you know, this is a, a photographer. This has been, been worked on. She said, yeah, it has. I said, it's cool. Um, you know, even with it being touched up, I, I still think we can, you know, do something with this, um, and show everybody that just because it is, from a photographer, just because it is touched up doesn't mean that it's always 100% perfect or that you can't make it pop that little bit more. So we're going to start and we're going to say um, adjust. And just like we saw in those other programs, um, there's all sorts of individual settings that you can use to do all. But you know what? I don't want you to mess with all that. Because, you know, over time, sure, take some time, learn those features, learn how you can really make some of your photos stand out more so than, um, than other agents. But the nice part here is you can quickly use things like auto tools where it right inside of this and we'll do before, right? So you can see it and we're going to click auto and after. You see how you just gain a little bit of vibrance there before? after. Does everybody see that? Let me hear from folks in chat who, who can visibly see the difference between these two photos simply with an auto filter, an auto fix that you don't have to go crazy learning all of these settings, learning all these different things. You can literally click a button, click auto and boom, end up with some better colors um, and some, you know, some better, just more vibrant um, better pictures. Yes. Is that helpful? That's super helpful, right? Um, now, this is just one of the many, many tools that are available within Pixlr, and it's free. You really can go in and go, what? so this put up the vibrance a little bit. Let's say we want to go more vibrant or less, right? Or let's say we're going to take the saturation down or up. We can really make these pop, right? Much sharper. Looks, it looks awesome. Looks great. And you see the difference. You can see that little bit of vibrance and that change. Now, I want to mention something here because this is the point where I've often heard, uh, let's say, hesitation or people saying, well, but Alex, you know, how much photo editing is too much photo editing? Should I be, you know, I don't want to give people uh, an incorrect perception of this property. Um, I don't want to get in trouble with the, the MLS or I don't want to get in trouble with my brokerage. Uh, what, you know, wh what about that? And, and I'll tell you this, there is a world of difference between what I've shown so far today in terms of cleaning up a picture a little bit, making it a little bit more vibrant, things like that. And doing things like, let's say this whole lawn was dirt and, you know, three little tiny patches of grass here and here and here. And then you went in and you added lawn to the whole yard. That's significantly different than changing the hue or the vibrance or the saturation on a photo. And, and the reason is this. As I mentioned earlier, most cameras have a lot of these settings 
right in the camera, right? You, you, that's part of why photographers are the level and the difference they are better at what they do is because they hone in those settings to get the best photo to begin with. And as I mentioned, you know, things change, lighting changes, the wind changes, all sorts of stuff changes, you're doing it. So it's hard to get it perfect. It's hard to get it absolutely perfect. So you need a little bit of this editing at the very end. And uh, Maria, I love it. Maria, thank you so much for joining us. She says, thank you for mentioning that, Alex. Absolutely. Um, I try to keep everybody in, you know, in, in mind of, of all of the ramifications of, of what we try to do here. Um, but like I said, these are generally settings that are in a camera that are, you can change the vibrance, you can change some of the saturation settings, you can change sort of those things in a camera. Hell, if you compare like uh, Nikon versus Canon, they have what are called different color palettes or color templates. They will actually use slightly different sets of colors based on what camera you're using. So it's totally normal to have a range within photo editing um, between like we're looking at the color of this grass, the color of the clouds, you know, things like that, where, um, like I said, just depending on the camera you're using can, can make a big difference when it comes into doing stuff like this. But keep in mind, it is not to do things like, you know, add a yard add an actual lawn and green and so on and get rid of all the patches and, and all that sort of stuff. I don't want to get you too far into the depth of that when it comes to listing photos um, because it's, you know, don't... Re Paula Montover makes a great point. Don't remove power lines. Power lines are there. They're part of the, the house, the, what people are going to see from that view. Things that are physically there in place um, is a very, very big difference from changing the color palette and the, the tones and things like that within the image. So when it comes to listing photos, um, I would stay away from doing a huge amount of really editing, right? But changing them to make them pop a little bit more, make them stand out, totally reasonable to do. Um, and, you know, definitely something that makes them stand out more in, in advertising, in the MLS against the other photos that it's going up against, all of those sorts of things. Now, if it comes to a different kind of editing, like we'll go back here for a second because I want to show you some things that you can do um, beyond just listing photos. Because if it comes to your profile photo, you know, don't go crazy. But there are some things that you can easily do to clean up um, headshots, clean up some other marketing photos, things of that nature that are a little bit more intensive and, and actually do require a tiny bit of editing. So let me first take you over because you'll notice that up here, Pixlr X, Pixlr E, and remove background. Guess what? It's another free tool. So we're going to say open image. And you know what? I want to use my headshot. I did a new headshot and I need, I want, want the background out of it. And then we're going to clean up my, my headshot a little bit more than this. Now, um, you know, I already did it on this one. Let's go back one. Let's use, I don't think I cleaned up that. There you go. All right. So I have a photo of myself here. Um, I have it with a, a kind of background that in a lot of things might be, so, you know, sort of difficult to, um, to remove. Um, and that took me into Pixlr, Pixlr X. Sorry about that. So let's go. All right. So poof. I mean, literally, I upload it and poof. The background is gone. Okay, gone. Poof. I don't. I mean, that's it, right? It, it, it's gone. I didn't have to do anything other than upload it to Pixlr into Remove Background, and it's gone for me. Is that is that a helpful tool for folks? Um, I hope so, because we'll we'll go even further in depth. I'm going to show you how to fine tune this. So what you can do here is. Um, We'll open the image. I'm actually, I'll do the full tall one here. Make it a little easier for folks to see. So it auto removes the background the moment I upload it. But you're gonna notice that 
I have some little marks here on my shoulder that are kind of close to the background. I've got some marks around my hair because it's really hard to pull backgrounds out of hair, right? So we're going to say fine tune. And we're going to take, we can change our brush size if we want to. I'm going to zoom in a little and you're going to see it's going to draw a red line around this. Poof. And there we go. And all of a sudden, we've now cleaned up the headshot. What do you think? Look at that. Look at the smiling face right there. Ah. Okay. So I clean it up. And now, if you notice, this isn't just a hard, like I'm not hard deleting anything right here. Okay. You'll notice that I'm not um, just chunking out stuff from my hair. What it does is it's a specific tool that erases based on the brush size, the softness, and the color differences of what you're actually using inside the brush. So it leaves what hair it can. Um, it just makes that little sort of AI or the part that's pulling um, the pieces a little bit more, a little bit smarter. So we'll do the same thing on my shoulder here, right? And let's say, ah, you know what? I've zoomed in a lot. That's kind of big. We can change the brush size down and start using some other better tools um, and mess, mess with this. Yeah, so Maria says this is something I use Photoshop for all the time. Absolutely. This is something that, um, that people use Photoshop for, and amazingly, I think this actually does a better job in some of the ways than... Um, so Carolyn says, can it erase wrinkles? So yes, it can. We haven't gotten there yet, but I will show you how to do that next. Um, <laughs> so yes, uh, we're, we'll go into that. We're just going to pull the background to start um, just to make it kind of easy for folks to learn how to, uh, to pull the background if they want to. And we'll just do a quick one here. And then, so you questioned before, because it's, can it erase wrinkles? And Carolyn says, LOL, it was a joke. But yes, um, you can erase wrinkles. So let me take you back into Pixlr X. And we're going to grab my same photo that we uploaded. Not, uh, not the one with the background out, uh, just the original here. Um, and you'll notice that in here, so the adjust tool is what we went into before. But there's also a retouch tool. Okay, um, there are also some tools in here for effects and so on that we saw before. Um, so let me just back up here. All right, so I've got a couple little moles on my forehead or on my cheek or whatever, right? Retouch. Retouch, 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 retouch. Where did they go? <laughs> okay, same thing. Retouch, retouch. Where did they go? What do you think? Is that helpful? Now, please don't go overboard with this. I don't, I never want to see your headshot and then actually meet you in person and go, I've never seen this person before. Like, it's got to be, you, you need updated headshots, right? You need some, you need updated information um, and it needs to look like you. Going way too overboard with editing or with, you know, changing who you are, your persona. That's never the first impression that you want to give somebody is like, you know, they're fake online. It's a fake persona. It's fake photos. You never want to be associated with that being fake. That being said, though, um, there are some tools that can make things a little easier. Let's say you've got a hair that just, you know, this photo would be perfect, except there's just a little hair that's right here. I did it. I was like, you know what, that hair, I'm just going to get rid of it. Nobody will know the difference. Looks great, right? 
Same sort of thing. It's uh, very easy to, to come in here and start fixing or cleaning up some of the, the little bags. Right? Now, as I said, do not go overboard with this. Um, you want to remain a real person. You do not want your online persona to, to you know, hugely be different than who you are. Um, but, so what does everybody think? Is this, uh, was this helpful today? Did we cover some, some like helpful tools, time-saving stuff, things that, you know, you can do for free? And are there questions? Let me ask, are there any questions about... Uh, the tools that we've covered so far today. I know, I love it, the blur tools. And there's a lot that you can do in here. Okay, there's this Pixlr platform itself um, is really a really powerful tool for photo editing, you know, cropping, rotating, Etc. All the, the basic photo editing stuff that you can do in Photoshop, in some of the other tools, you can do right inside of Pixlr, uh, totally for free. Um, they do have a few paid features. I mean, but I'll put it this way. I never use the paid features. I haven't used them yet. So, and it's pretty straightforward. Carolyn says, very helpful. Thank you so much, Carolyn. I greatly appreciate it. Um, so you know what, I'm going to, while we're, we're waiting on questions here, uh, I'm just going to switch us over. Um, and I want to mention just a couple things here. So for everybody that, uh, that saw it last week, um, we are doing a Canva masterclass on February 2nd. Craig and I will be doing this together. I am super excited for it. Uh, it is uh, still $30 for tickets today. Ticket prices go up tomorrow. So definitely get in on that. We are going to be covering a ton of stuff from how you can use a lot of the templates in Canva for everything from social media posts to postcards to things like that. I'm going to talk more, a little bit more in depth on setting up a brand, picking your colors, um, doing your logo, things like that at the beginning when, when we actually get into it. And we're going to give away three, um, you know, time tested custom templates to everybody who, uh, who joins things that they can use right away with their business. And uh, replay is available with tickets. So um, if you do register and you're not able to make it, you will be able to get the replay uh, for that uh, that paid masterclass. And I'll mention, um, so the, the bonus for the first 10 people to do it uh, is already gone, long gone, way long gone at this point. Um, it is still $29.99 today. Uh, I can drop that link into chat. Um, all right, let me read chat here for a second. Uh, Maria says, with these tools, we're likely not going to keep Adobe. Yeah, it's too expensive to pay monthly for. I don't blame you, Maria. Um, it, it is super expensive. I pay the 60 month, bucks a month, literally $60 a month for Adobe. Um, but I use Photoshop. I use Illustrator. I use Premiere Pro. I use the Media Encoder. Um, all of those sorts of things. I, I really... You know, I use so much of Photoshop for like graphic and vector design with Illustrator that if it were not for Illustrator, I probably would get rid of, um, would get rid of Photoshop myself. But Illustrator, I just, there's really not much that does vectors the same way Illustrator does for me and my business. But that being said, your businesses are totally different. There's no reason um, realtors should be messing around in Illustrator no real need for you to work in what's called, excuse me, vectors. Um, all right, so questions here. Is there a tool in here that would... All right, let me back up, sorry. Uh, Lori says, can you remove cars from driveways or would it be obvious? Things like that, big things are pretty obvious. Um, it really depends on the angle, the photo itself. And it's definitely not something that I would recommend doing inside of a free program like this. Um, something that big, uh, a real Photoshop master could probably do, but 
uh, in a free tool like this, it's going to be a nightmare to try to pull off and have it look real. Um, and it's not something that I would, I would recommend trying to do things that are that big. So just sort of something to keep in mind. Uh, Aaron says, is there a tool in here that would remove the top of a chair in a photo? Two people, the chair is right between the two people. So again, Aaron, um, removing big things, removing, you know, sizable stuff um, inside of any photo editing program can get a little bit challenging. The trick is this. If you have a solid color or a solid as a background, that's a lot easier to do than if you were to have a whole bunch of colors and backdrops and, and stuff to try to contend with. Again, this is something that a professional um, with Photoshop still might be able to handle, but is not something that I would recommend uh, diving into like this. Now, if you have just like a, a blank white wall or a blank, you know, green or whatever it is wall behind it, that is something where you could probably handle it um, in, in something like this. Uh, Lori says, just curious because I had a listing that had a car that had to be towed, but they waited over a week to get it moved it and it was in the driveway. Yeah, that's really frustrating, Lori. I, I, I wish there was more to do on that. And the other thing to kind of keep in mind with something like that is when you remove a car, that also means that you're digitally imposing something else that people might be actually interested in about the property. So like, it's hard to see if that driveway is covered in oil stains or cracks or other things like that if you're removing a car and then superimposing something that isn't actually physically the thing. Um, you know, that's where it gets really challenging. And where I said before, you know, when we were talking about, you know, you don't really want to do anything that's a lot of physical movement of things around the property. You know, you don't want to clean up the yard and turn it from gravel to a lawn. You don't want to, you know, superimpose a driveway where there's not a driveway, things like that. Um, yeah, George says, just go back and retake the photo. I would recommend that. I would recommend going back and retaking the photo. Uh, and, and here's what I want to mention everybody too. So the photo you see right here, okay? The photo that I'm editing, my headshot that you see right here is my phone. I took this photo with my phone and I took, I, I have great lighting. I have some professional lighting that I use, but that photo is my phone. I have a really nice Sony camera too, but that day, for whatever reason, um, my phone was better. Now I'm not saying to not use a photographer. Photographers are very skilled in what they do. They, they've spent a lot of time knowing how to get the right angles, get the right lighting, get the right, all of that sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, you definitely, but for a lot of the stuff that you can do, if you know what you're doing with lighting and with a little bit of photo editing and touch up afterwards, you'd be amazed um, at how good of a job that your phone can do, especially if it's like a quick touch up photo like that or a little extra photo to show, you know, things of that nature um, for going back to a property. And good job, Lori. Good job going back, getting that good picture um, for your clients. Well done. Well, well done. All right. So um, let me say any other questions I'll ask uh, in chat before we start wrapping things up. Last week, we had a free Canva workshop. As I mentioned, um, we are going to be doing another one. Uh, we're not another one. We're going to be doing a masterclass, an actual paid uh, Canva masterclass that Craig and I are going to be doing together. So you will have both of our minds for the entire time on that. Uh, that is next week, next Tuesday, February 2nd, 2-2 two, two, at 2. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. How easy is that to remember? 2-2 two, two at 2. So check that out. Um, tickets today are still 30 bucks. $29.99 today, but tomorrow those go up. So definitely uh, get registered today and save that little bit of money if you would like to. And if not, um, get registered after that. So uh, any other questions, comments, thoughts, things in chat before I close this down? You know, I'm going to actually mention one more thing to everybody um, before we close this. And, uh, you know, before we, we close this down here. Um, First, thank you to everybody who joined today. I greatly appreciate it. Appreciate all of your time. And I want to mention that we are going to continue. So 
Craig and I are going to do three workshops a month that are totally free. Um, they are going to be in the Agent Inner Circle group, so right here in this group, same way you've seen these last two events. Uh, we're going to do three a month, and uh, I'll be coming out with some of the dates on those. Um, I'll be dropping the event later today into the group. The next one we're going to be diving into is all around YouTube. Um, and we're going to be doing a, a YouTube, a free a YouTube workshop for folks. So if you're interested in that, let me know in chat. Um, let me know in comments. And uh, I'll be posting that event uh, later today at some point. If people want to mark that they're going, we'll start sharing it out with their friends. So let me, uh, let me see. How long? Oh, from two. So it is a, a two hour class. Um, link for the two, two workshop. Good call. Let me throw that in chat right now. So it is going to be a roughly two hour class, although I would not be surprised if Craig and I go long. And what I will mention is, um, the replay is going to be available, uh, for paid tickets. So there you go. There is the link, um, for the workshop for the, so that's for the master class. Two, two master class. Um, paid event. If you um, if you pay for tickets, you will have access to the replay. So even if you can't make that date and time uh, for the masterclass next week, you will definitely still be able to get the content. Just make sure you get registered in time. All right. Awesome. Any other questions? Did, did folks find that helpful? Are there a few tips and tricks today that you're going to walk away with and, and be able to use? I certainly hope so. Awesome. Absolutely. You're very welcome, Lori. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you to everybody. Um, I'm excited for these workshops that we're going to be doing. We're just going to try to bring a ton of value this year, bring a ton of information and tools that, you know, we use on a, on a daily basis and try to teach people the little tips and tricks and, and things like that. Um, ideally, it's going to be stuff like today, half an hour, 45 minutes, quick hit. Here's a couple little things that you can do. Here's a couple little tools or features or things you can do um, and then go from there. So awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I am going to close this down. We are closing in on three o'clock. Uh, so definitely check us out, uh, agentinnercircle.com. My name is Alex Camilio, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle. Thank you to everybody who joined us today. Uh, check out the next upcoming event in the group. Check out agentinnercircle.com. Check out the masterclass. Check out our YouTube channel. You know what? Give me a, a subscribe on YouTube because we're going to post the replays there as well um, for any of our workshops. So, cool. All right. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody's time today. George, thank you. Carolyn, thank you. Uh, Maria, thank you. Arthur, thank you. Thank you for everybody who's here. Barry, thank you. Um, Aaron, uh, I'm just trying to go through quick here. Maria, Paula, Heather, uh, everybody who is here today and, and drop Brett. Uh, Sarah, oh my God, so many people. Um, I can't get to everybody. So thank you everybody who did join today. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, until next time, Alex Camilio uh, signing out.